During the weekend of the 30th of September and the 1st of October 2023, Kieran, Keir D95 Doyle and myself attempted to do a 36-hour drive around Silverstone in a Seta Corsa Competizione in support of Racing Pride. During the attempt, with about four hours to go, we were very kindly greeted by Richard Morris, the founder of Racing Pride, along with Last Lap Lucy, one of the social media admin, and we were able to have a chat with them about Racing Pride. Hello. Hi there. How are you? Hey, yeah. Uh, good to speak to you, yeah. Uh, congratulations on the fundraising you've been doing. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's been a, a pleasure running this uh, event um, on behalf, really, and uh, being able to support you guys. Um, I say uh, the credit really goes to Matt for the idea to um, to, to support uh, to support Racing Pride, um, and it's one that he introduced me to, and uh, it's it's awesome the amount of uh, work you're doing, really, and uh, the mission statement you've got. So um, yeah, it's it's been a pleasure, and to have hit our our, our target at least. Um, is is really really exciting. There was a particular point in the uh, in the stream earlier on where things, after a particularly long stint for me, um, things really um, re things really took off. So it was, it was great really to um, you know get that movement and uh, people are, people are supporting, which is fantastic because um, you know you see um, how things are at the moment um, in terms of certain attitudes, and it's it's just good to see that positivity um, towards. Towards um, that, to, towards getting people um, of LGBTQ plus into into motorsport and supporting them when they're there. So um, yeah, I don't know, what, I don't know what you think of that. And um, yeah, it's yeah. been uh, yeah, I mean, it's amazing that uh, what you've done this weekend. You know, obviously a massively long race, <laughs> 36 hour race is uh, <laughs> is quite impressive. How are you actually doing in the race, by the way? Um, in terms of um, our, what, what, what we're doing basically is uh, due to the nature of the, the platform we're using there's no capacity sadly for any AI to keep us uh, keep us busy uh, but we do have our own uh, inter team rivalry going on about who can set the most laps all right. and despite racing for just over 32 hours we're around four laps apart <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of our total distance it's on the order of about 470 laps each and somehow we're about four laps apart. So it has been keeping us quite competitive and keeping us on our toes. So we have some little competition going on at least. <laughs> Spur us on. Yeah, that's uh, that's quite impressive. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Obviously, you know, so grateful for the effort you've put into this, and it is, you know, really touching for me to see people donating and supporting it. And um, you know, Racing Pride's obviously grown enormously since I first had the idea in late 2018 of this should be something that supports LGBTQ plus people in motorsport from my own experience as a driver and knowing people around me and um, the feeling at the time that the, there was no vocal support or allyship, the industry just wasn't talking about LGBTQ plus inclusion and you could feel like the only person, you know, you could feel like you were the only LGBTQ plus person in the sport and that could be quite isolating and yeah I think the sort of image of the industry and perhaps some of the ways that it spoke about things and did things you know was really quite dated so I felt like it was really a, a very necessary thing um, but it started out as just social media posts and getting a small handful of people together um, launching in June 2019 and you know the growth of it has been uh, staggering <laughs> so uh, we've now done bits of work with six Formula One teams. Uh, McLaren last week becoming the sixth team that we've uh, done at least something with, and having three official partnerships with different Formula One teams, and you know, um, ambassadors not just in the UK but in Europe, in North America, in Australia. And you know, for me, one of the the really most emotional things was this year launching the individual memberships so individuals can join in and having members in 17 countries now which is you know <laughs> pretty overwhelming to think there's uh <laughs> you know there's people around the world who want to um you know want to be part of this vision i had to sort of bring people together and raise this up the agenda and uh you know really try and make sure the sport is inclusive for everyone and and i think 
in a way that isn't about criticising motorsport. It's about um, making sure that you know everyone can get involved and that everyone feels welcome and really growing the sport and improving you know both the image of the sport and people's experiences of it. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's an absolutely fantastic initiative, really. Um, um, amazing incentive, and you know, I've always said that. You know, um, uh, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Justin, uh, um, uh, uh, streamer and content creator. Yeah. Um, we both ran a league called FHK, and I, uh, the reason I bring this up is because again, that was an attempt to try and um, increase equality and, and inclusivity in uh, league racing on uh, on the Formula One game. Um, as we we're always saying that you know, once a helmet goes on, the only thing that matters is the stopwatch and not who we are. So it's that idea that you know, it's about trying to break down those barriers that prevent people from having these opportunities. And I love that that's the dialogue that's going on at uh, R Racing Pride and the outreach that's going on to try and support that acceptance, uh, at least gradual acceptance, and try and give people those opportunities that they deserve because they shouldn't make a difference really as far as I'm concerned and it's great to be able to support that that work um, I was curious really and I guess for I, something I've uh, not really something I'm probably worth uh, covering is for anyone that's in viewing that um, maybe doesn't really know who you are obviously we brought in Richard Morris um, from Racing Prize one of the founders obviously but I guess um, would it? Would you mind like maybe introducing yourself a little bit? Because uh, I know you've done. You're, you're an active driver as well. So it's like what series you race in, and maybe a bit of background on where Racing Pride came about and things like that. So just just for people here, really, you may be wondering uh, who you are. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm Richard Morris. I am a racing driver myself. I've been racing since I was 12 years old. Uh, started out in karting uh, in a very casual way like a lot of people do just a friend's birthday party indoor karting was the best chance I had and uh, fell in love with it and progressed to you know trying a little bit of outdoor karting and then fortunately my dad was able to get me a kart so I could go and compete in some club racing into the British Championship and yeah moved up through different kart classes uh, ended up racing in 250 supercarts, uh, gearbox supercarts, which are incredible machines. You know, they're um, uh, five <laughs> yeah. gears, uh, no body work. Uh, they've got proper <laughs> bike engines in them. So they do naught to 60 in well under three seconds, like two and a half seconds. And they do top speed of, you know, well over a hundred miles an hour, but with no body work, no seat belts, no nothing. <laughs> and it's, no mini air then. <laughs> so, yeah, they um, they really wake you up in the morning when you drive them. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, most, <laughs> the most direct experience, but but also I wanted to drive them because they were the closest thing to racing a car that you could do that was karting because they have front brakes as well as rear, and it's more like setting up a racing car to some extent with that. Um, and anyway, I moved from there uh, into Formula Ford single seaters. Um, one of the friends I'd had from the early days in karting, um, his dad owned a Formula Ford team and uh, he uh, was able to give me a very reasonably priced opportunity to move into club Formula Ford, uh, which I did at Castle Coombe in 2017. Um, and that season went mm -hmm. very well. Uh, I qualified a pole for the first race. Uh, and, uh, Excellent, well done. <laughs> uh, one half Fantastic. Of races that year, uh, which was very good. And um, got a lot of pole positions and things. Built some, you know, some momentum. Moved to the British Championship uh, 2018 and couldn't really uh, properly afford it, but uh, did most <laughs> of the rounds. I had to miss a couple of events just due to money, but. Uh, but I finished second in the British Championship and I won four or five races and um, that kind of put me a little bit in the shop window and, and that got my real chance in racing at that point. I'd been talking behind the scenes with uh, a prototype team called Spire Sports Cars and uh, I sort of approached mm -hmm. them at the All Sport International show and just said like, you know, one day I want to get into prototypes, the car looks amazing, you know, had a conversation. And we started chatting again towards the end of that season. And they said, well, you know, we have a works driver who we run in one of our cars, but he's moving on at the end of the year. So we'll have a car available. Um, do you want to come and test the car? And so I did uh, at Donington Park. And uh, that went 
very well and I set a very quick lap time in the car and I got offered uh, the works drive for the next year and, and that really changed things for me because for the first time in my career, you know, I had a, a team of manufacturers saying we'll give you a car, we'll give you the best kit and all you've got to focus on is performing, you know, you don't have to worry about the uh, the budget side of it, you've just got to turn up and do your job and, and that was, um, you know, a big moment uh, that season also went very well the next season uh was meant to be like our big proper attack and they've actually built a car specifically for me which is an amazing experience you know when you go to the team workshop and you start with a completely you know well not even a bare chassis they're building the chassis literally around you you know i, I sat in the in the jig and they go well where would you like the steering wheel to be where would you like the bodywork to come to you know wow. and uh <laughs> And that was a, a special car they made me for 2020. And um, uh, I just started testing it and getting excited about it when COVID came. <laughs> um, oh, no. But we did manage to get out in it towards the end of the year. And we did um, eight races, I think it was. And uh, we were on the podium every race that we did. We won most of them. We got lap records. It was a great time. But yeah, sadly, not a full championship. But what it did do was open the door for me to go and drive for Praga in prototypes, the British Endurance Championship. Wow, excellent. Um, yeah. And joined actually one of my big rivals from a different team from the previous series. Uh, he's, <laughs> he'd got involved and he said, oh, I know just the guys to drive alongside me and, and invited me in. Uh, drove for Praga, that went very well. And that in turn got me to where I am now. I now race as a works driver for Revolution race cars in the European Sports Amazing. Prototype Cup. Uh, that came about because um, the guy who set up that project, Phil Abbott, he previously designed the Radical, so I know a lot of sim racers will be familiar uh -huh. with the SR3, the SR8, you know, the SR3 is probably the best selling prototype anywhere in the world ever. Mm. <laughs> and he's the guy who designed <laughs> that, and he wanted to make a carbon fiber, high downforce, properly fast version of that kind of open top prototype concept. Um, so he set up this project called Revolution and um, he phoned me up and said, do you want to drive my car? And uh, <laughs> I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't going to say no to him. You know, he's a, a big figure in the no. industry. I know he knows <laughs> what he's doing. So that's what, I've, um, that's what I've been doing the last couple of years. I drive something called the Revolution 500 Supercharged because it's got a 500 horsepower supercharged 3.7 litre V6 in it. Um, wow. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, all carbon fiber, very high grip, very powerful. Uh, it's an amazing machine. It's built to sort of take on LMP3 cars. And um, yeah, I've been wow. racing that okay. around Europe and, uh, and I'm having uh, an amazing, amazing year. I've had eight races so far this year. Um, I've been on the podium in seven. I've won five of them. Um, and really special for me actually the other week i raced at zandvoort um obviously over in the netherlands uh, where the dutch grand prix is and uh we had what well, was really moving for me we had racing pride members um both who sort of you know a couple of people came with me but we had spectators who were members of racing pride who'd driven you know some of them from places like rotterdam you know across the netherlands a couple of hours to be there to come see me uh, we had a photographer come from Switzerland to come and be part of it. Um, there were marshals on four different posts who were Racing Pride members, and one of the clerks was a Racing Pride member as well. And <laughs> it just felt like a, a massive party, you know, it was a, a race event, but I was just absolutely surrounded by, you know, yeah, you know, love and support for me, which is really touching, but you know also by a group of people who've been brought together by racing mm. but also wanting to connect with each other and be part of this kind of international queer family mm -hmm. you know it's uh and they were all really supporting each other the atmosphere is incredible we all went out for dinner after the race and you know it's just it's amazing to be able to to bring people together like that and i i try to as i travel around um because I love racing and I love racing for me, but it, it really motivates me to, you know, be able to share that with people and also be able to get other people excited about the racing and, you know, bring them in where there's opportunities to and, and give them some memories. So, um, yeah, it was uh, really, really great. And um, 
yeah, there's a lot more traveling to come. I'm going to be racing at Spa uh, the weekend after next. Um, that's uh, fantastic. Also in this European Championship Series. Um, I've got something very exciting happening the weekend after that, which we'll be announcing in the next couple of weeks. But uh, Oh, excellent. Make sure you're looking out, guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, there will be a big event following that closely. And, uh, and then I'm racing at Le Mans in November to, to round out my season, um, which will be my first visit to Le Mans. So um, just a Bugatti circuit, but Amazing. still, you know, special place to go. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and I'm also looking forward to next weekend. We've got the Vista Scramble, which is a uh, event that Motorsport UK and Racing Pride are, are teaming up on. Um, we've been doing lots of stuff with Motorsport UK, which is great. You know, when I started Racing Pride, we didn't have any relationship with the governing body. It was very much an initiative led by drivers and engineers and mechanics and volunteers, marshals, you know, people in the sport coming together but rather than it being sort of created by the governing body. But as we've sort of gone along, most Sport UK has also started realizing the value in, you know, making the sport more inclusive and, and has started to to work with us. Um, you know, I sit on, there's a, a committee of most Sport UK to discuss exactly these topics, but also we've started doing, you know, bits together where it makes sense for Racing Pride and most Sport UK to work together. And uh, one of those is we're holding this member event alongside something called the Vista Scramble next weekend, which is a, um, a classic car show that happens on the site where the Motorsport UK headquarters are. And they're opening up their headquarters for our members to come together, network, have a go on their sims. There is a sim section. And uh, we'll also Excellent. be having a bit of a panel to <laughs> talk about <laughs> talk about LGBT inclusion. So um, yeah, that should mm. be a really positive event. I love those events, as I say, where we, where we get people coming together. Um, yeah, and, and in terms of what Racing Pride does, I mean, I realize I haven't really introduced that too much in detail yet. We kind of, I always say there's three pillars to what we do, and those are visibility, community, and education. Um, on the visibility point, it's, you know, the only gay male F1 driver that we're aware of was uh, a driver called Mike Boodler, who drove briefly in the 1970s. There's been a complete lack of kind of representation in the sport historically and i think that's been mm -hmm. a, a challenge for lgbtq plus people um who you know can't see that there are people like them in the sport therefore they can't see whether they'll be accepted and so on and, and a lot of the imagery that has right. been around the sport has been super macho and super manly and you know you have to be this type of person to get on so so we're trying to sort of break that down by having role models who are LGBTQ plus people in all these different roles in the sport. Um, that's where our sort of concept of having ambassadors comes from. You know, people who can talk from authentic experiences about the challenges they face, but also talk positively about the great time they've had in motorsport, you know, the different things that they're doing and achieving um, to help hopefully, you know, help inspire other people from the community that they can have a great time in the sport too, uh, and to help to change perceptions because I always think with stereotypes and um, discrimination you know it usually stems from people not really understanding or knowing people who are different to them um, you know it's easy to hate a, a faceless concept it's much harder to to hate someone that has a face and a name and a story so yep. visibility I think is is important um, but it's also visibility of allyship you know I think uh, one of the reasons that it sounds silly, but one of the reasons this wasn't talked about was because no one started the conversation, you know, and I think there were a lot of people and are a lot of people in the sport who want to see that positive, happy, inclusive, forward-looking, progressive space, but they didn't necessarily have, you know, an opportunity to start that conversation or an opportunity to show their support. So, you know, we really care about allies too and, and just giving people a chance to say, oh yeah, I've seen what Racing Pride's doing with that. I really think it's great that we're trying to include people in the sport and, you know, just give them ways of starting that conversation, showing that bit of support um, that can make a difference to people around them. Uh, community, yep, absolutely. you know, I think that's the second thing that we do, you know, bringing people together. I've talked about that a lot. It really is so important. Um, and people can get involved just, you know, following our socials or, you know, whatever it is. They don't have to get like, 
properly stuck in. But equally, we do have that member community there if people want to, you know, be on our, we've got a, a, a really safe space Discord server that's just for our members, that's moderated, where people do open up and discuss things because they know that they're just around, you know, other LGBTQ plus people and allies. Um, we do online events there, and then we do these real world events, and yeah, bringing people together. And then the, a big chunk of what we do, the education piece, um, probably takes up the most of my time and is probably the least visible externally, but we really engage directly with, yes, organizations like Motorsport UK, and I'm currently working on uh, changing some policies with them to make sure that, you know, various people, particularly trans people, are properly included in the sport. Um, yep. But we also work with, uh, championships, organizations, and teams. And this is where we've partnered with the F1 teams to really look at their internal policies, how they operate day to day, their practices and procedures, run workshops with staff from student placements up to Christian Horn has been to one of our workshops at Red Bull. Um, Amazing. You know, really trying to spread that education so people have a, an appreciation of how to be a good ally of the sorts of terminology which helps the sorts of support they can give to people around them the, the things they can do to just make other people's lives that bit better so uh that is a lot of what we spend our time doing and um you know when we partner with these f1 teams they don't just stick a rainbow on the car you know once a year we do work with them all the time <laughs> to to try and yeah improve experiences for people in the industry and make sure that you know when we're saying to people uh, come into this sport, come into this industry, it's fantastic. Well, we want to make sure it actually is, and you know if they're lucky enough to get Absolutely. a role in the industry, that's actually their experience. And and I think it does make a difference to the people in those environments. You know, uh, I've had messages from people who've been to our workshops with the team saying, you know, I've been at this team for quite a long time. I've never been out because I didn't know how people around me would, would react. But coming to the workshop, it gave me a bit of encouragement, but also seeing my colleagues there and seeing them support and seeing the team support, you know, now I feel able to come out to some of them. And, um, you know, it's, it's um, that sort of thing has really been transformational for the people it's helped who sometimes have been living one life outside of work and a completely different life in work and now they can just be yeah. themselves and commit themselves fully to what they're doing exactly yeah it's it's really it's really pleasing to see um how much uh, effort is going into uh, educating at the top level um in what is a global sport you mentioned uh, christian horner being involved and that is extremely encouraging when it comes to culture and, and attitudes and perceptions, it has to start at the top. So I'm, I'm, I'm pleased that that is the approach that's being taken. And obviously that isn't to uh, not acknowledge those at, on, the, on the front line of these operations in these Formula One teams, uh, because they're absolutely imperative to the operational day to day. But it's great to see that people like Christian Horner are getting that message straight from you. Yeah, um, yeah. And are able to develop their own ideas and perspectives on it based on real examples and experiences you've had. So it's really tangible and really relevant and and up to date. And it's things they really need to know to move things forward because it's a very rapidly moving sport in so many ways. So why would this ever be questioned? It, it has to take this approach as well. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, uh, you know, a, a huge privilege to, to be able to get access to these people, but it's also as I say, it's important for what they do. I mean, the, the panel we had at McLaren uh, last week, the whole topic was how diversity and inclusion improves performance um, mm. because F1 teams are all about performance. And uh, I was there alongside uh, Tom Stallard, who's Oscar Piastri's race engineer. Um, and he was part of the panel talking from a, a perspective of he used to be an elite athlete himself and uh, talking about the mental and physical well-being side of, of performance of a race team um, and from his perspective of having worked with you know a number of, of F1 drivers 
Um, and then on the same panel, we had uh, Jess Runnicles from Motor UK talking about girls on track and myself there talking about race and pride. Um, and I think it is really important to the, the performance of these teams on track that they you know create these inclusive environments and this is why sort of the top levels are, are buying into it you know people like christian mm -hmm. orner what they want to know is how can i make my race team the best race team it can possibly be how could i make it exactly. you know a, a really happy place to be but also a really high performing place to be and the great thing is they yeah. they go together and i think when you get these people to understand that they will then give a lot of time and effort and energy to it when they see the the value in it um so you know if you have a, a culture which um is accepting for lgbtq plus people well when you're trying to recruit graduates uh apprentices people who are in that sort of 16 to 24 age bracket perhaps a third of them identify as lgbtq plus and if you're not a place that is a welcoming place for LGBTQ plus people, well, you're missing out on a big chunk of talent amongst that age group if you're not appealing to them. So Absolutely. it's about getting talent in, but then it's also about, you know, as I say, we've been to places where, you know, people have previously not felt comfortable to be out, now they do, and um, that helps keep them in that team environment. It keeps them there, and it keeps them yeah. feeling happy and motivated and performing at their best. And I think as well, you know, from my perspective as a driver, you know, it's not like I talk to my race engineer all the time about, you know, my same-sex partner. It's not like, you know, it's the of topic of conversation. But um, it's, you know, a weight off my mind that I know that I'm accepted by the people around me for who I am. And that allows me to concentrate on the racing. Um, and I think communication is vital to being a good team and, and when you remove the barriers to communication by letting people be themselves you improve the way a team yep. operates so i think you know in all these ways what's really great is these teams these people we're partnering with are starting to appreciate that yes this is the right thing to do but it's also something that you know of course it's relevant to motorsport because it's relevant to how you get the best out of people and how you get the best out of people is how you perform the best and how you win um so yeah. um i think it's you know you don't have to sometimes i see comments online saying i'll oh, just get back to designing a faster car but when teams engage with this they are thinking about how they get the best results on track because of course they are that's what we're all there for at the end <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. You've got people who are integral to the design of these cars and the production of these cars, for that matter, um, for all walks of a Formula One team and any motorsport team, for that matter. And the freedom of expression is what encourages creativity and therefore innovation. And that's exactly what F1's DNA is. Yeah. It's always been about innovation. Those who can find that idea, that that new concept that no one even considered before, and it gives you half a second of pace. If you have freedom of expression, you're more likely to maybe come across that nugget that gives you that half a second, that gives you the advantage on the track. So why wouldn't you encourage that kind of culture? And that's why it's important to have that kind of dialogue and conversations uh, between you guys and, of course, those Formula One teams that want to maximise their performance. It's in their DNA to do so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and I think the, you know, the other thing that people sometimes say is, you know, oh, well, why are you why are you preaching to the world you know why are you forcing this on me or whatever and, and i think that's not really what's happening here i think no one's saying look everyone should be gay everyone should be lgbtq but what we're saying is you know you do you but everyone has to have the freedom to do that everyone has to have the freedom to be themselves you know i think in my mind everyone has the right to be who they really are um, and I would never challenge that or, or, you know, force someone else to change. But I also think that inherently means that everyone has to respect the rights of everyone else to be who they really are. You know, I think it's up to every individual to decide how they want to live their own lives um, and to have the freedom to be able to do that. So, um, you know, it's not about preaching, it's, it's about making sure that every individual has that same freedom, that same opportunity. And, and I think that's also the difference between 
uh, people often talk about the difference between equality and equity. You know, equality is having theoretically the same chance at something, and equity is actually having the same level of opportunity. Um, and I think when we're talking about that creativity and that creative process, it's also about being listened to equally. You know, so if you have that respect within mm -hmm. the team where everyone feels able to contribute their ideas and everyone feels listened to, well, then you get more of those ideas coming forward, coming through and being implemented, you know. So, um, yeah, I'd say I think it's it's yeah. got loads of benefits. And, and I think as well, you know, um, when people say, you know, should motorsport be using its platform in this way? Well, I think, well, it doesn't detract from the sport in any way that it does. And it can do a lot of good as well. You know, I think it's um, it's great for the sport internally, but also I think it's, you know, inspiring for people who watch Formula One to see it talk about things that they care about. I think it can make a difference to people in their everyday lives to see this type of support from the, the sport that they follow. You know, there are loads of knock-on effects from a, a sport with the kind of reach that F1 has. Um, you know, embracing yeah. this this type of theme. And, and um, yeah, I, I, I think it's, again, just about as well getting those stories and ideas in front of people. I think, uh, you know, if more people can hear stories from members of the LGBTQ plus community, as I say, it puts a face and a name and a story to something, that means it's not this abstract thing that people can hate on. It's something humanized and understandable. Um, and ultimately in the world, the more people, individuals, teams, championships, organizations we can have expressing their allyship, the more people in society will see that and, you know, reflect on their own ideas and, and be encouraged to, to be allies themselves. So, you know, I think a lot of the work we do is, is very focused on the sport, of course, but I also believe it can have, because of the size of the sport and the impact of the sport, it can have a knock-on positive effect to society as well. Yeah, absolutely. As we know, F1 has a global influence, and uh, you know, if they if they're able to facilitate it in the right way, they can use that influence in a really, really positive way to get that right messaging across in a way that is is um, constructive for you know LGBTQ plus acceptance and you know more more mutual trust between particular team members and departments. And looking on the broader scope of this as well, in the uh, in the fan space, the public space, and so on, the stakeholders, if you will. Um, so yeah, it's it's really really critical. And I guess um, what, what I'd ask you really is, um, I know you probably touched on it quite a bit because um, you've done a fantastic job explaining all this. But what key message would you like to send to everyone watching uh, today regarding racing pride, its importance, and uh, what its impacts could be, and what you you hope for the future, really? Yeah, I guess the key message is that racing pride yeah okay it might be something that <laughs> initially was an idea i had and i started but it's always been about the collective about people coming together and about bringing people together um you know racing pride isn't sort of about an individual or a team or a project it's about trying to bring a supportive community together and everyone can be part of that and all the expressions of support you know, whether people did donate today, that's wonderful, but uh, also, you know, thank you so much if you did. But, um, you know, just people being here, people sharing the supportive social media posts and being there, therefore, for each other is really important. You know, I think everyone can do something to show that they're an ally and that will mean a lot to LGBTQ plus people around you, who follow you, who interact with you, who can see that and they now know that they have someone that they can talk to so yeah i you know i'd love to see more and more people get on board be an active part of racing pride be members of racing pride join this journey but even if it's just hitting like on a post or sharing something or helping to spread the message or just saying to people that you meet in most sport contexts oh i really like what's happening with teams getting on board with racing pride all those little things that just show allyship they could mean a lot to someone who notices you doing that and, and they can now see that they have an ally around them and someone that they can talk to. So, um, yeah, any any act, however small, can make a big difference in, in this space and really support what Racing Pride's doing because ultimately the success of it in 
creating a more positive sport and a more positive impact on the sport. You know, it won't just depend on the efforts of the individuals pushing Racing Pride. It will be about how big that collective effort becomes and, and how many people are willing to be part of seeing it succeed. So, yeah, thank you so much to everyone who is watching this, supporting it, doing whatever you're doing. Uh, and thank you for <laughs> listening to me, if you are. <laughs> No, absolutely. It's absolutely fascinating to first of all hear your story about your, your career and your, that upward trajectory and all these amazing places that you're going to be visiting and racing at. It's fantastic. And all your recent success, of course, and this amazing initiative that you've developed and the whole team at Racing Pride. It should be commended, really. Um, and I guess um, the final thing I would want to ask, really, and is for anyone here who maybe wants to know more about how to... Uh, what more wants to perhaps know more about Racing Pride and also maybe how to get more involved and you talk about the membership, how they might be able to get involved as a member and maybe uh, just to give a little bit more info about that, about where to direct people perhaps. Yeah, so uh, Racing Pride has its website which is conveniently enough racingpride.com, Racing Pride all one word um, and there's information on there about the different things that we do and, and some news pieces, bits about our partners and there's a section there about membership and describing what that is and, and that's if you are interested in becoming part of that community. Um, they are annual memberships, we're going towards the end of, of this year, we'll be doing it again next year um, and yeah, lots of opportunities come up through that for online networking but also coming with us on our journey with our partners, you know, putting on these in-person events where our partners are so generous in giving us, you know, unique access and, and support and lots of great events and opportunities to get together. Um, we have our social media pages on X, used to be Twitter, uh, Instagram, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and uh, those are, you know, our most active uh, socials. We do have a Facebook page as well. Um, and uh, that's at Racing Pride HQ for headquarters um, <laughs> because <laughs> annoyingly I think someone took just Racing Pride years ago they're not doing anything with it but anyway oh, no. at Racing Pride HQ <laughs> is our socials <laughs> um, and uh, that gives you the you know very latest up to date what we're doing right now and uh, we love to highlight everything that's going on with our ambassadors. We have groups of community champions as well, um, LGBTQ plus people throughout the sport. And we just love to share positivity on those pages, you know, news about what we're doing, but also news about little LGBTQ plus successes, whether that's a poster on our story or, or whatever. And, and yeah, we hope that that, you know, gives some visibility and, and gives some encouragement to people as well, that there, there are lots of positive things going on in this sport and, and getting people together so yeah uh, look at our website look at our socials um, as I say even if it's just helping us spread our message on socials you're doing a great thing for Racing Pride um, but also you know, if you do want to get more involved there is the membership option there you can also always contact Racing Pride and this is something I really should say so we have our, our email address contact at racingpride.com um, and anyone can get in touch with us if, uh, you know, perhaps they are LGBTQ plus and they're struggling with something within a motorsport or automotive context. Uh, maybe they're an ally of someone and they want advice on how to be an ally uh, to a teammate or, or something like that. Or if they just want to, you know, offer to help or get involved in some way. Um, you know, one of the ways is that you can drop us an email and, and say, you know, I've got these skills, I'd like to be involved in, in some way. And, you know, we have a great team at Racing Pride, but of course I'm always interested in hearing from anyone who wants to be part of what we're doing or anyone who we can help. So, yeah, um, always open to people getting in touch. Excellent. Well, you've heard it. You've heard it loud and clear, folks. There is numerous ways you can get in touch and get involved. So uh, don't be shy and make sure you let friends know as well about this because I think it's critical that people are aware that these um, avenues exist to uh, get that support and uh, collaboration on how to make uh, motorsport more inclusive and uh, really try and um, improve 
the sport as a whole. So, yeah, Richard, thank you so much for your time and joining us. Um, it's been a pleasure speaking to you, and I'm sure I, I echo um, the thoughts of everyone in the chat as well. Um, but this, this was a pleasure hearing from you, and um, hope to hear again soon. But, yeah, thank you. Thank you for your time. Yeah, you're, you're extremely welcome. And thanks so, so <laughs> much, uh, you know, uh, for everything this weekend, for doing this mammoth 36 hour race and for wanting to support racing pride it, it really is very very touching uh to have people wanting to to support us and um yeah the the contributions the people who, who donate and so on that money will be put to to good use growing racing pride enabling us to do more things to have more people working on our projects so uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks Excellent. so much for everything you've done, and, and uh, thanks for letting me uh, whisper on for a while on your stream. <laughs> Not at all. It's been it's been great to hear from you, and credit goes to my teammate MC Palms, of course, for the idea to uh, support you guys, and it was a brilliant one. So yeah, it's been great to hear from you, and uh, yeah, we hope you have a great rest of your day, and uh, hope to hear from you soon. It's been fantastic. Thank great. You. Thanks so much, and good luck with the rest of the stream. Thank you very much indeed. Take care. Yes. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Hi Lucy, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you. Excellent, excellent. Um, yeah, so yeah, it was great to get um, Richard's insight, I guess. And um, yeah, it's um, yeah, I'm not sure was there. Well, yeah, obviously you wanted to be involved in that conversation, I guess. So, well, I guess what what is your involvement with um, Racing Pride? How do you um, what work are you involved in? What projects are you involved in? So I'm a social media admin, so pretty much everything that goes out across the socials is done by me. So I'm, you know, responding to DMs, um, interacting with posts, sharing things and putting those inspiring stories out there for everybody to see. Um, and I also help out with our community, which is what I thought I'd come and have a quick chat about because I heard Richard was mentioning the community and I was like, I love our community. Um, so I thought, <laughs> you know what, I've got some helpful things to say. So I thought I'd just come talk about like all the awesome things we've got up to and the fact that we've got some more exciting plans coming up soon. So yeah. Excellent. By all means, yeah, I'd love to hear more. Absolutely, I'm sure the community would as well. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not sure if we have any of our community members listening. If we do, hello. Um, so first of all, when you become a community member, um, you get an invite to our Discord server, which is a really cool place, if I may say so myself. Um, we've got all sorts of people from all over the world. I think we've got several different continents, loads of different countries. Um, and everyone is united by their passion and love for motorsport. Um, it's open to everyone. You don't have to be LGBTQ+, you can be an ally, you can be questioning, it really doesn't matter. Um, as long as you're supportive and kind and accepting, that's all that matters. Um, and what's great is we can have some really good discussions in there in a safe and moderated environment. So we have people perhaps sharing stories of maybe they have come out or they're thinking of coming out and asking for some advice on how they can do that, um, sharing how members of their team have reacted or maybe something unpleasant they might have heard while at some sort of racing event and then we'll be there to give them some support on that um, just to make sure, you know, we want to make sure everyone's as comfortable as possible. Um, so we discuss all sorts of LGBTQ plus issues, but it goes even beyond that because it is a community. We're not just here to talk about mm -hmm. one thing only. Um, so we chat about just how our racing careers are going or well, I say hours are going. I'm not a racing driver. Let me make that very clear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but some people talk about yeah. how their racing careers are, are going. Other people like myself yep. talk about watching the racing because I do love watching. <laughs> um, we talk about <laughs> other issues as well. We talk about, because, you know, diversity is big, broad spectrum. Um, I know myself as an LGBTQ plus autistic woman, it can definitely feel quite intimidating entering the motorsport world and being surrounded by what seems like 100% cisgender white men and they're all aged about 60. But in reality, that's not the case. There is so much diversity there. Um, and you just have to know that you have your place. And I think a lot of our community is coming from all that. We have so many women, we have a lot of neurodivergent people as well. And we all are just there for each other, um, which is so nice. <laughs> yeah. 
It is lovely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, building the confidence between each other and being able to uh, break down those barriers and yeah. and try and um, understand it goes beyond the stereotypes and yeah. um, there's there's genuine caring people out there who want to support and and build that um, those connections that ensure that people feel welcome. So it's it's really positive. Yeah, yeah definitely. Absolutely. We've also had um, people arranging meetups at various races. Um, I know there's been different events recently where people have said, oh, I'm going to that as well. Uh, we, we recently had a big member meetup at the London E-Prix, which was so fantastic. We had us there with our little racing pride flag. Um, we asked someone who was <laughs> passing by to take a photo and they were super supportive as well. Um, it was just really great to connect with everyone and see that, you know, we're, we're, all, we're all actually real as well. Because, you know, when you talk to someone on Discord <laughs> and they're like an online friend and then you see them in person, it's like, oh. <gasps> You're in 3D. It was, it was brilliant. <laughs> we got a group photo and I put it on the socials and yeah. And that made even more people want to join because it's like, oh wow, these awesome people are all hanging out together at a race. I want to do that too. And the good news is you can. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. It feels, like uh, feels like a community. There is a yeah. demonstration of that community yeah. spirit there for sure 100%. in a tangible form, which is really great and helps with that that trust of course as well i assume yes definitely um and like i said it's a super safe space everybody in there you know we keep an eye on what's going on we don't let people you know come in with hate speech or anything pretty obvious um bare mm. minimum point there but yeah it's a really nice place and everyone just yeah. follows the rules and you know is respectful of because we all have different opinions on let's say formula one you know some people might like verstappen and some might like hamilton and that's fine we all have our, hmm. our differences in preferences, but everyone's <laughs> chill with that because it's we're accepting and it's an accepting yeah. place. Um, oh, and I should talk about some of the cool things that the members get to do as well. So we have recently got to go to um, Aston Martin F1 factory, uh, the brand new wow. building at Silverstone, which was incredibly cool. So um, we had about six of our members come along and join us there. Um, and they had a little tour of the factory, got to see how all the different parts work. Um, had a meeting, a, like a panel, where we had we heard from some speakers from Aston Martin, um, as well as City, one of their partners. And Mike Crack made an appearance as well, which I did not expect. He was, wow. he was just casually Amazing. in there chatting. And there was also one of the <laughs> Miami Grand Prix trophies as well. So I was like, wow, like, <laughs> it Amazing. was very cool. Um, right in the thick of it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That was I'm, what an opportunity. <laughs> I know we have more things like that coming up. Um, mm. So that is a, like, that for me is the best thing I would say about being a member. You get to do these really cool, like, money can't buy things. <laughs> um, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it's incredible I the know, connections that are there. Yeah. 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 Like I'm always, it doesn't get old going to the factories I've got to say. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine but yeah. yeah absolutely when you stumble across team principals just wandering down the corridor mm -hmm. and um trophies from the weekend before it must be yeah. absolutely spectacular and to get to share it with 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 those people who are looking for that community and being able to build that trust at the same time it's it's a win-win as far yeah. as I'm concerned. Yeah, and to have all those incredible. partnerships you've got with F1 teams is, yeah, it's yeah. it's it's staggering, really. It's it's amazing. Yeah, and it, <laughs> it makes you think just how far Racing Pride has come. Because when I joined, it was 2021, and we were only partnered with mm -hmm. Aston Martin F1 then, um, which was still huge. Um, but I know for a fact Racing yeah. Pride, when it started out, it was very grassroots. It was very small. And now the fact that we've got this huge community network, we've got contacts in almost every F1 team at this point, we've got ambassadors community champions just people who are fans of the different teams um across all forms of motorsport as well not just formula one it's just so good to see it grow and to be able to just say to someone mm. within motorsport like oh i'm the social media admin for racing pride and then they know what that is which is like yes huge <laughs> yeah. we love that and the fact that it's growing so much is really a great um tell as to how valuable racing pride is in the motorsport community because people are noticing it people are seeing the work that's being done and they're supporting it um so that's yeah, yeah it's a really good thing it aligns directly with that pillar doesn't it visibility and uh, you know it's encouraging more dialogue about it uh, by creating that visibility in the first place yeah and you know 
it, I think it's it's it can only be a benefit going forward to keep talking about it and keep demonstrating and you know people will come on board with that and people will realize that those there's those spaces where they can feel safe and 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 speak freely about you know who they are how they feel yeah. and really get the support they need to thrive in their their area in this case motorsport so yeah. and i think it can it can only be a benefit in so many different ways um and yeah it's amazing to see the work that's already been done really it's yeah and it's, hopefully, it's fantastic. as the years go on, it's going to become more and more normalised to just be yourself, mm. be who you are. Um, there are so many... Yes. <laughs> let's talk about the F1 feeder series, for example. There's so many drivers coming through. The statistics of someone being LGBTQ, there's probably been some that we just never knew about. Mm -hmm. Just based on pure stats. I'm hoping that in the future someone will feel comfortable enough to come out. Um, if they choose to do so yep. because that would be such fantastic representation um and i feel like as well it would be really cool for sponsors because you know we've seen we've mm. seen some women trying to get on the ladder to f1 and i know a lot of people have got behind those women and like really tried to support them and obviously there's been um some opposition as well from people who are a little bit closed-minded um but mm -hmm. generally there's been a huge positive response so i think if we could see someone who is openly lgbtq plus that would be really inspiring for so many people and hopefully will encourage more young lgbtq plus people to get into karting into racing um, and go from there which is mm. just going to make the community bigger and better and brighter absolutely yeah it's a, it is a bright future i think absolutely with initiatives such as this it's it can only be a positive outlook because it's it's strength in unity as far as i'm concerned and the more um you know connections that are being made the the stronger that network becomes and the more people will uh, be attracted to it and be um, interested in it and engage with it so it's it's really encouraging to see that that development and that growth in 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 recent years yes, um definitely. with something that grew out of it was just an idea from Richard and it's grown into something really big and it's involving all you guys as well and it's it's giving people a voice as far as I'm concerned that's that's really important I think that'll be important to uh, perhaps a, a few people here or beyond that the people they people that are here that people they know um, you know that that's something that can help get that dialogue moving more yeah. um, that there is these avenues within which to 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 speak and 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 be who you are yeah. i mean that's absolutely key and and i guess to that end actually um i asked the same question that i asked uh, richard is um what key message would you like to send to the the folks watching here it's a good question because there's a lot <laughs> i could mm. talk for hours but i'm not <laughs> <laughs> I, I will not do that because i do need to have my dinner soon <laughs> i think the key message if i could say one thing is just show support don't be afraid to have the conversations don't be afraid to ask questions i think it's always good mm -hmm. to talk talk about these things it's not you know being lgbtq is not something that needs to be like hidden away or anything it's part of who somebody is and i think that everybody's differences or whatever they feel is <laughs> part of who they are that makes yeah. everyone special because you know we're, we're all special and unique in our own ways and that is a great thing as mm -hmm. richard mentioned earlier I, what one of you mentioned earlier um you know if you feel like you're free and open to be yourself in a workplace you might be able to have that creative idea because you're thinking a little outside the box um mm -hmm. so it's it's yep. a huge positive to just everybody be themselves and make continue to make motorsport this really vibrant place where everybody belongs because that's how it should be and i'm really really excited for the bright future ahead because there has been so much positive progress in the last few years and i'm just so excited to see where it all heads in the direction of next <laughs> absolutely yeah and it's wonderful to the passion from you guys as well honestly it's it's the the investment in this in this project this this initiative is absolutely 
um, staggering and yeah, really, really encouraging, as I say. And it's it's honestly been really, really good to hear from you as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, we weren't able to bring you in with Richard because that could have been a really fantastic discussion. That's I okay. uh, Richard was fully acknowledge that, but <laughs> if I was yeah. next to him, like he's such a good speaker, I'd have just been like, yes. <laughs> 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 so perhaps it was better yeah. to have these separate conversations that's great yeah absolutely so i'm no i'm really pleased we had this opportunity um mm-hmm. to uh with you and richard um th- yeah. this evening so I'll yeah just um richard actually before i go and just say a massive thank you to you guys for doing this like it's it's so like inspiring to see that you guys care so much and want to support racing pride like that it makes my heart happy and I know it makes a lot of other people very happy as well. Like our community has been chatting a little bit about what you guys have been up to and it's like, ah, so we're all very, very happy and excited. So yeah, a massive thank you to you guys and to everyone else who has supported just by watching, chatting and donating in any way you can. It's hugely appreciated. Excellent. We're all racing and full of pride this evening. Thank you very much. It's really, I'm really glad it's been able to have that impact already. Um, and I'm sure that you know the the messages and and uh, actions you're taking will continue to have impact um you know within the motorsport space in all its facets and i'm glad we were able to be a small part of that in um in this fundraising effort so yeah credit to my teammate mc palms again on his um on the idea of um working with you guys and really being the facilitator in um getting a lot of this organized i'm here just having a a nice uh, a nice chat with you both um so yeah he deserves a lot of credit for making sure that this was all there in place and uh, making sure things were arranged with richard and Caden, yourself and so on so yeah yeah credit to him as well it's been a team effort as far as i'm concerned um so yeah i really uh, appreciate you guys making the time to come and join us to have a chat and uh explain to the viewers on uh, what very surprise really about so yeah Thank it's been you. great. Thank you so much. I wish you guys all the very best with the rest of it. 36 hours is insane. You guys are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Just under three hours to go, so we're definitely on the final, uh, stretch. final stretch now. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not too long left. Yeah. But thank you so much for your time. No worries. And uh, yeah, hopefully speak to you and uh, some of the team soon. Yeah. Okay, bye. Brilliant. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much to Richard and Lucy for joining us on our 36 hour fundraising event for Racing Pride. The GoFundMe is still up and will be up until the 31st of October 2023. So if you do wish to make a contribution towards Racing Pride, you can until the end of the month. Or as Richard and Lucy both said, you can go to racingpride.com and become a member for £25 for the year. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you learned something from Richard and Lucy and a massive special thanks to Racing Pride for all the work they do for the LGBTQ plus community within the motorsport world.